The reason why you can't seem to get out of low elo probably isn't your mechanics, your champ pool, or your teammates. What if I told you that it's due to your philosophy? It might sound like BS, but hear me out. We all get told that we have to be the carry. We watch streamers that 1v9 games and think, okay, if I want to climb, I have to do that. And you really don't. In all honesty, the way to get out of low elo isn't to flex your superior mechanics or outplay people all the time. We simply just need to allow our opponents to int. Let me break down a seemingly innocuous clip from a coaching session I had this week to demonstrate my point. Grave starts by hovering his mid laner to make sure that she can successfully crash the wave. And then noticing that Ramus comes to pick up the farm at tower, he takes the chance to invade and steal away Ramus's raptors. Okay, so what exactly is the problem here you ask? Isn't this a good thing? Well, yes, but the issue is that it doesn't provide Ramus with an opportunity to int which if we unpause, we will quickly see what would have happened. If you're confused, essentially what I'm getting at is that Ramus showed mid on super low HP. And after this, we can reasonably assume that he's going to do one of a few things. Walk into his top side, walk into his bot side, or base. There really just isn't much else that he can do from this position. There is now just a one in three chance that Ramus willingly walks right into Graves' loving arms, ready to die. If this were Challenger, would Ramus walk into his top side after seeing Graves leave mid? Absolutely not. But this isn't Challenger, and neither are your games. If Graves had simply just thought through the fact that Ramus might simply do the worst possible play and face check him at really low health, he would have camped the bush by Raptors and let Ramus int into him. And mistakes like these can really set you back in the game, but you don't have to learn everything the hard way. The fastest way to improve is by zeroing in on the biggest issues, and that's where our subscription service comes in. With premium courses that dive deep into core mechanics, live commentaries where a challenger player teaches you how to escape the exact rank you're stuck in, and one-on-one -on -one coaching, we've got all the tools to supercharge your improvement. The best part, our service is completely risk-free to try as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. Click the link in the description to start improving fast and get the rank you've always wanted. Now, Remember, it's not just about avoiding your own mistakes. Your opponents are going to constantly be making them, so you don't have to play the game to be a hero. You just have to learn to see how your opponents could int and shape your play around improving the chances that catch them doing something really stupid. I mean, something that's insanely laughable to me right now is the fact that Lane Shaco is getting a nerf this patch. His mana cost is being increased on boxes and his mana regeneration is being nerfed. Lane Shaco is notoriously seen as pretty useless in high elo for lack of a better word. But in low elo, players don't play around the fact that areas could just be boxed. They'll just chase him much like people chase a singed or they'll kill the clone, detonating it, and killing themselves and their teammates. The whole point here is that AP Shaco can't really make proactive plays happen. He has to rely on his opponents messing up and falling for the same exact tricks over and over again, which unfortunately they're going to do. And somehow this means that we should nerf Shaco? I, I don't know. Anyways, here's an example with Shaco jungle. Although the champ or role here doesn't matter at all, it's simply the idea behind it. At this point, my diamond student is looking for the potential mid lane gank that the enemy mastery might do soon. Now, once he shows, I want you to listen to what my idea is here. Okay. Ping it, ping it, ping it. Cause if he goes for your raptors here, you kill him. Yeah, ping, ping, ping. Like Malzahar needs to just come. Spam, 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 spam. This is pretty similar to last game. I just got information on where someone was, and then upon seeing them, I start thinking of what it is that they're going to do next, and how I can potentially punish it. Once I see Master Yi head towards bot side, I can basically narrow it down to the fact that he could invade me, go do something in river like Dragon or the Scuttle Crab, head bot, or just go back to his camps. If he invades me and my Malzahar, who has ult, runs towards the play, Yi dies on the spot. Unfortunately, my student didn't really know what my intentions were here. Of course, I asked him to ping and he did, but you can see that he used the on the way ping and didn't spam until I brought it up. I was just trying to get Malzahar to see that Yi was in fact inting here, which on the way pings don't really do. He needed to communicate that we were asking for Malzahar to do something. At this point, Malzahar is pinging on the way and starting to collapse, but I want you to watch what my student does here once he sees Yi walk towards river instead of mid. He turns away to go back to raptors. You might be thinking that this isn't that bad, but I want you to now pay attention to where Nautilus was when this happened. He had complete first move into river, and if we apply the same principle from before and think about what Yi could do here, it's very possible that we could just chase him all the way down river right into Nautilus's waiting arms. While we obviously didn't have Malzahar's move quick enough to punish Yi's first int, 
Him facing towards River and allowing us to corral him in is another int just a few seconds after, yet both went unpunished. These kinds of mistakes happen all the time, and it doesn't take long to spot them once you know what to start looking for. In another example here, Diana turns on Sweeper and starts running into the enemy jungle. She's confirmed that she's not on any vision and has a pink ward in inventory. She gets all the way into it and then turns to hunt down the Anivia she saw lurking in River. Unfortunately, she dies for this, but this could have been a game-winning play. And if you're keeping up with the theme of this video, it has absolutely nothing to do with how she played the fight. If we go back, we should really think harder about the circumstances surrounding this play. Diana had already cleared out most of this area and could easily put a pink in the raptor bush, securing vision and making sure she wasn't spotted. With absolutely no one on the enemy team showing besides Anivia right now, it's rather risky to move, but it is relatively safe to sit still and just let someone int into you. Let's turn the vision to both teams here, and you can see that had Diana just waited where she knew there was no vision, Misfortune could have easily just walked right into her and she would barely have to do any work to pick off this sunless AD carry. Stop showing your hands so early. If you're off of vision and the enemy has no idea where you are, just keep it that way. Yumi and Diana did all of the prep work necessary here to bait the enemy team into them and then ended up taking the bait themselves, trying to be heroes and attempting to pick off Anivia who was three levels up. This is an essential skill to master, especially for instances where you want to counter gank. Let's watch my gold student execute a counter gank scenario and see yet another application of this idea. He spent quite a bit of time here waiting for Gwen to get close enough to gank her from the bush, but it also had an amazing side effect of allowing Diego to show here, throwing his E down, and perfectly set up for a counter gank. He shows up, Rexai gets a double kill, and everything works out for the best. So what could I possibly complain about here? Once again, this is just the idea of allowing your opponent to int. In this case, Viego was telegraphing his actions. He wanted to gank and go in. This one decision to leave the bush now and start the fight right away upon seeing him is the biggest error. Of course, the plays still worked, but in this moment, Viego had enough information to decide to just WA and ult out if Rek'Sai tried to chase him. This is exactly the reason why you get stuck in your elo. This play will work against the players that you're playing against, but as soon as you climb higher, you'll see that it stops working as they don't respond in the same way. The play that you've made hundreds of times that has worked stops and then you'll end up going back to the elo where it'll work again, creating this cycle of climbing and dropping over and over again that I'm sure everyone is all too familiar with. If we just don't show, there's no chance that Viego randomly stops this gank to leave. Without new information, he will commit to it 100% of the time. The second we give him info, it's a knowledge check, and we've essentially created a 50-50 where sometimes it works if our opponent responds incorrectly, and it won't if they respond well. This is a little bit different than the previous examples, and this next one is as well, but they're all related. Let me quickly show you how I can apply this concept in my own games to crush my smurf games. I'm wrapping around on the tower here to set up for a dive on the enemy Udyr, but in true low elo fashion, my Renekton stuns a minion and I jump ship on my idea almost immediately. Of course, I just showed here so Udyr knows I'm in the area, but even in plat or emerald now, you still cannot assume that it means that he's not going to just int into me. I linger around and look to gain more information, and upon spotting him, just start to think about what he's going to do next. Of course he could recall here, but most likely he wants to try to go back to his camps, so I just wait instead of leaving, and like clockwork, he runs into me just to die. When you watch challenger players smurf, of course the games look like this. It seems completely effortless and honestly the first thing most people think is, wow, the enemy team is so bad, my games are just not the same. And it's not true. We do play against the same players, but ideas like this are what makes them look so much worse than when you play against them. Not to stroke my own ego, but when we do play in these games, it's not really hard. It never feels like I have to work for the wins, and it's almost as if it just kind of falls into my lap. It makes sense if you think about why I'm just waiting for my opponents to mess up. I'm not required to force anything or make insane plays to drag my team across the finish line like I would have to in Challenger. I know that everyone is going to be doing things that are suboptimal and bad the entire game, and I just have to watch for them to happen. Of course, this is a skill that you will build up over time. Stay on the lookout for scenarios like what you just watched, and you might be surprised at how often your opponents will just int. 
Low elo isn't supposed to be the slog that many players find it to be. It's not a bunch of uncarryable games, it's just a matter of being able to see your opponents making the bad plays and punishing them for it. But remember, sharpening your skills to spot these errors more consistently is what our subscription service is all about. Don't miss the chance to accelerate your improvement with our premium courses, live commentaries, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. The best part, our service is completely risk-free to try as you're kept safe with Rank Up Insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill capped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So for those of you committed to mastering the game, the link is in the description below. All right, that's a wrap on this one, guys. We here at Skillcaps want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.